this is the final part of my talk about how to process a renogram. In part one I gave an introduction and explained what a renogram is. In part two I explained the importance of background subtraction and showed how to see when it's been performed correctly. Uh, in part three I gave some real examples of different background subtraction methods and in part four I discussed how to draw the necessary readings of interest. In part five I described the recommended background subtraction methods so now in part six I'm going, going to talk about how we quantify the results in particular to calculate the relative function of each kidney and their output efficiency. So if we look at the components that make up the renogram, if we plot activity against time, first of all we have an uptake component representing activity that's come into the kidney. That is a rising curve which gently flattens off. The rate at which it rises depends on how much there is in the blood. So early on when there's a lot in the blood it rises quickly and as the blood activity decreases it rises less quickly. Now in a normal kidney, if there's just a simple delay between what comes in and what comes out, the elimination, what comes out, is just a delayed version of the uptake curve with the time between them being the transit time through the tubules. So if we want to know what is left in the kidney, it's the difference between what went in and what came out. So the difference here, shown by these yellow bars, is the kidney contents or the renogram curve. So this is yet another model showing what the shape of the renogram curve represents. And as we see, it's made up of uptake, which starts from the beginning and continues, and elimination, which starts after a few minutes, because elimination doesn't start until activity begins to come out into the bladder, and that has a minimum transit of the time it takes to get through the tubules of maybe three minutes. So what we want to do is to quantify uptake. So we really want to see the purple curve. All we have available is the renogram, the yellow curve. But fortunately, during the first few minutes, we see we've got a window of opportunity when the renogram represents uptake only. Elimination hasn't yet started. The time that we can use for this quantification is any time before the purple and the yellow curves diverge. We can't see the purple curve, so we have to estimate where it is, but clearly it must come before the peak of the renogram. Elimination starts a short while before the peak, because at the peak the rate of uptake and the rate of elimination uh, are, must be equal. On the rising part of the curve before the peak, uptake is winning. On the downslope, elimination is winning. But at the peak, by definition, uptake and elimination must be equal. So the time when elimination starts must be a little while before that. So bearing that in mind, let's see how we can calculate the relative function. We need to make some assumptions. Let's first of all assume that background subtraction has been done correctly. As I've explained at length in this talk, uh, that's not easy to get right, but let's assume that we have done it properly. Secondly, we have to assume that attenuation is the same for both kidneys. That means that both kidneys lie at the same depth in the patient's back. Gamma rays emerging from the kidney will be attenuated by the tissues in the patient's back, so not all of them will be counted by the gamma camera. So we have to assume that the loss is the same for both kidneys, which implies that both kidneys lie at the same depth. If that assumption isn't correct, I will explain how we can deal with that uh, in a separate talk on display of the renogram. Thirdly, we have to assume that mixing is complete. As I explained earlier in this talk, uh, during the first few seconds after injection, mixing of tracer in the blood is not complete, and that means the compartmental model doesn't work, and therefore background subtraction may be wrong, because the concentration in blood in the background site might not be the same as the concentration in blood in the kidney. So to be safe, we maybe need to ignore up to one minute after injection. We also need to assume that elimination hasn't yet started. Certainly that means slightly before the peak of the renogram curve. But if all those conditions are satisfied, then the counts recorded in the kidneys are proportional to their function. That means that we can calculate relative function using the relative left and right values of any of these parameters. 
we could use the counts in the kidneys at a fixed time, for example, two minutes, providing we have done background subtraction properly. Or also, on background subtracted counts, we could look at the counts in a summed image in the left and right kidneys over an extended time from maybe two to three minutes. Or we could look at the area under the activity time curve. That's known as the integral method, uh, which I'll explain shortly. And that uh, could be a time from, say, one to two minutes. We could use the initial slope of the activity time curve, the rising part of the Renogram. Uh, that's not very easy because it's not a straight line, it's a curve, and measuring the slope of a curve is not that straightforward. If we're using the Rutland plot, the slope of the Rutland plot uh, is easy uh, to determine because that is a straight line, so it's easy to measure that slope. Or if we've applied deconvolution, if our software includes that, we can use the height of the retention function as a measure of the relative function. The recommended methods are the integral method or the slope of the Rutland plot, but any of these techniques should give the same relative function as long as the four criteria at the beginning are satisfied. However, make sure that you use the whole kidney curves, not the parenchymal curves. If you've calculated parenchymal transit time using separate parenchymal regions of interest, don't use those curves for relative function because they don't include all of the parenchyma. The relative function must come from curves including the whole of the kidney. So if we look at the Rutland plot method of calculating relative function, the computer will generate a Rutland plot like this for each of the kidney. We've got the left kidney here and the right kidney here. For each of those, um, the computer will fit a straight line to the rising portion of this curve. That corresponds to the uptake section. The slope of that is a measure of the uptake in the kidney. So in this case, the left kidney has got much better uptake than the right kidney. We can see that the computer reckons it's 80% function to the left kidney and 20% function to the right kidney. The advantages of this technique are that it allows for appropriate blood background because in just the same way as when we extrapolated the real Renogram curve by I to see whether it started from zero, we could tell if it didn't start from zero there was still some blood present. On the Rutland plot, when we extrapolate this straight line fit to see where it hits the axis, that tells us exactly how much blood we still have to subtract. Another advantage is that this linear extrapolation of this fit on the Rutland plot is much easier than the eyeball extrapolation that I talked about on the real Renogram because that's a curve, not a straight line. It's also easy to see when mixing is complete. Here we can see on the left kidney that one point, the first point on this curve, lies below the straight line, isn't part of the fit, but the second point onwards are part of the fit, so this is equivalent to where the kink occurred in the real Renogram, and we had to extrapolate. Here on the Rutland plot, we can see that we extrapolate the straight line fit. We can ignore the first point, and that is when mixing wasn't complete, but in this particular case, mixing was complete clearly by the second point of the curve. Not only that, it's easy to see when elimination starts. In the real Renogram, elimination started sometime before the peak when the Renogram curve de deviated from the uptake curve, but we didn't know where the uptake curve was. Here on the Rutland plot, the uptake curve is a straight line. So it's very easy to see where the points deviate from that straight line, and that indicates where elimination starts. So it's not surprising that those advantages means that this is the most reliable method, and it's the recommended method if your computer software allows it. If we look at the integral method to calculate relative function, first of all we have to ensure that background subtraction is correct. That means that we need to ensure that the extrapolated curve starts from zero. So here I've included the dashed lines with the eyeball extrapolation to demonstrate that these curves are correctly subtracted. We have to choose an appropriate time interval, so we start after mixing is complete. Uh, if we can identify a kink in the curve, we could ignore everything before that kink. If not, um, 
one minute should be safe. Everything before one minute must include the time when mixing is not complete. So if we want to be cautious, we start after one minute. We also have to end before either kidney starts to empty. Now, we've already observed that the emptying starts just before the peak. So the left kidney has a peak here, and the right kidney has a peak here. But uh, we've got to include the same time for both kidneys, so we use the time of the earlier peak, in this case the left kidney, and emptying must have started shortly before that here on the time axis. So we can add up the total counts under each curve during this interval from this start time to this end time. And if we have CL counts underneath the left kidney and CR counts underneath the right kidney, then the relative function is the fraction of the total for each kidney. So the relative function of the left kidney is its count CL as a fraction of the total CL plus CR and multiplied by 100 to make it a percentage. And it's a similar expression for the right kidney. Note that by definition these two numbers must add up to 100% because they're the fraction of the total function due to each kidney. So this is the recommended method if you don't have the Rutland plot software available on your computer system. It should give a good answer providing you have correct background subtraction and you choose the start and end times of the integral appropriately for individual patients. Now I've talked about relative function and I've talked about background subtraction but let's see how the two interrelate. Here are some curves that have been correctly subtracted. They start from zero. And let's suppose that the left kidney in blue has got 800 counts under that part of the curve and the right kidney 200 counts. So clearly the relative function of the right kidney is 20%. But if we were unfortunate enough to over subtract and take off too much background, if we had 100 too few counts in each curve, it would be 700 for the left and 100 for the right which looks like 12% function to the right kidney. It's unlikely that we over subtract. What is more likely is that we will under subtract, in which case we would get 900 for the left kidney and 300 for the right, which makes the right kidney look like 25%. So by under subtracting, we have overestimated the function of the right kidney. So clearly, background subtraction is not just a cosmetic thing. It can affect the relative function. So if background subtraction is wrong, then the calculated relative function may also be wrong. The effect is worse when kidneys are unequal in function and when function is poor. If function is equal, so it's 50-50, then under or over subtracting will probably hardly change that because it takes the wrong amount of both kidneys equally. Now to quantify elimination. We can measure something called output efficiency. Your analysis program can generate the uptake curves for each kidney by extrapolating the first few minutes of the renogram. So here we've got the rising part of the renogram. That's been extrapolated to give the uptake curve, sometimes called the zero output curve, because it represents what's come into the kidney if nothing were to come out. And it can do that using either the integral of the blood curve or the fit from the Rutland plot. So if the software offers the Rutland plot, it's quite natural to extrapolate in that way. But if it doesn't, you can still do it by integrating the blood curve. Now we can measure the output efficiency as what came out divided by what went in. What went in is the uptake curve. What comes out is the difference between the uptake curve and the renogram. So at any time, we can measure this output efficiency. Uh, there are actually two slightly different versions. St Bartholomew's Hospital in London um, suggested renal output efficiency, ROE, whereas Great Ormond Street Hospital suggested pelvic excretion efficiency, PEE. Pelvic excretion efficiency is calculated by generating the uptake curve by extrapolating from the Rutland plot, whereas renal output efficiency is calculated by using the integral of the blood curve. But as long as background subtraction is correct, both methods will give very similar uh, results. So these two techniques are virtually equivalent. Here's an example of pelvic excretion efficiency. The 
plot at the bottom shows the renogram for the left kidney in blue with an extrapolation showing blue dotted line which is the uptake curve or the zero output curve for the left kidney and in red we have the same thing for the right kidney and in 30 minutes you can see that the uptake curve for the right kidney is here but what's actually left in the kidney is here so 95% of what was in the kidney has come out that's pretty good whereas for the left kidney at 30 minutes this is what has come into the kidney this is what is left in the kidney so 49% has come out that's its pelvic excretion efficiency which is not nearly so good so this is how we can measure the output efficiency at any particular time so in summary of this whole talk the main thing is that the renogram curve can be used to quantify kidney function and if you're using technetium 99m mag3 that is better than technetium dtpa because there is more mag3 in the kidney and less in the blood and that makes background subtraction much easier correct background subtraction is important not only for cosmetic effects but because it can affect relative function but it's not easy to get right you have to allow for blood background as well as tissue background. The test for correct background subtraction which I demonstrated is just a renogram curve should rise smoothly from zero after extrapolation if necessary to overcome the early mixing phase. And the Rutland plot is the most reliable method of doing that. It's recommended by the guidelines. But unfortunately, not all nuclear medicine systems offer it. So you may not be able to use it on your system. Now, if you found these, this talk interesting, you may like to uh, watch some more of my Renogram talks. I have a talk on how to display a Renogram, which is the follow-on from this one about how to process a Renogram. In that I include how to quantify absolute up uptake, not just relative function, and also how to allow for kidneys that might be at different depths. I have another talk on models of the Renogram, which shows several different models of the Renogram in addition to the ones that I've shown during this talk. Uh, and the Renogram, the Rutland Patlack plot explained, gives more details about the Rutland method of background subtraction. The Renogram Deconvolution Explained shows how to calculate mean transit time from the Renogram. And I have another one on diuresis renography, which gives an explanation of diuresis renography, and in particular compares diuresis renography with mean transit time calculated by deconvolution. So you may find these talks useful if you want to know more details of any of these topics.